All right, everyone, how you doing? Welcome to the webinar tonight. This is Ryan Stack. If someone could do me a huge favor and just let me know if you can hear me okay and you can actually see my screen okay, uh, we'll get started. So yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're good. We're good, Sue. Thank you, Jack, Alice, and the entire rest of you. I appreciate it. Um, Sarah asked me to come on board and do this webinar tonight to show you a little bit of how to build a landing page and how to drive traffic to it and really do it in a simple way so that you can leverage this with your teams. Ultimately, if I, I think, I've always said this, I believe this uh, system that we have, the Explore MA platform or the DMS system is one of the most underutilized, underpromoted, cheapest tools we have, yet nobody uses it. And I understand why it can be a little complicated. Um, we've used ours, so I'll kind of give you a snapshot of what ours looks like if you haven't seen it. And this is built on the same platform. And if you actually notice, there's nothing creative about this. It's that way on purpose. Uh, we could make it really pretty, beautiful, um, cool things moving around. But the idea was to make something that everyone could do. And ours is pretty much images we've, we've taken off of, you know, where you could buy an image or the companies provided the image and then made a, a website reflecting that. So that's what I wanna teach you. Basically, the idea of a landing page is to send people to a platform where they don't have to contact you necessarily to view information about the business. I really feel that in building a shop.com business, you can have your shop.com website linked places, and but when you talk to people and they say, well, how does your business work? What, what is a, you know, give me kind of an idea. There's not a lot of places to send them that that you know that they've watched something or you know that they've digested it. Or maybe you want to customize it to be something you're showing or a video you did. And sometimes you just got to send them to like YouTube or all these different places. And you end up not knowing if they watch something. You don't know if they actually made it there. You don't know if they went there but then saw 50 other videos that stole their attention. And uh, and I think this is a solution to that. It It is now... Um, evolved in at least our business building life that I don't know, I don't think I would know how to build this business without it. I mean, it's it's almost like um, try to build this business without social media, try to build it without a cell phone, you would, you'd be lost. And I feel that having a website has become a necessity. Doesn't mean that everyone needs one, doesn't mean that everyone's going to get one. I just think that it is in your best interest to have one to, to bring people to, to leverage your time. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? I want to be able to answer some questions as we go through here too, but, um, having a place to send someone to, to learn information is going to help you recruit. So, uh, so you guys know where we're coming from. Uh, we're supervising coordinators. We've built this business on one business center and, uh, just started now going for the next pin level. And we've launched, uh, our 20th person, is coming on board personally uh, so far this year, and our team has just launched their 91st uh, as of tonight. So we're growing pretty pretty quick for, for this size business that we're in, and um, a lot of people are using links, videos, and things, whether it's their own DR, uh, DMS website or other people's. We're kind of leveraging each other's sites as well. Um, but my suggestion is you should build one either for yourself or your team that everyone could then use to promote to get this type of uh, digital traffic, if you will. So I'm going to show you tonight, or Sarah suggested to me to do something basic. I'm going to go a little bit outside the box and see if I can pull this off in a simple way. You may have to watch this again. So uh, don't feel like, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed by what I, what I saw tonight. Hopefully you won't be. Hopefully I keep it simple enough. But this website platform, the company really did us a favor. They gave us some of the most sophisticated uh, uh, digital software in the market where you're not stuck to a template. You're not stuck to, you know, uh, the picture has to be on the left and the image has to, you know, the, or the text has to be on the right. They allow you to use this and create whatever you wish without any limitations. So understand that, yes, it can do a lot, just like shop.com has a lot of layers to it. But if you, if you learn some basic skill sets and spend a little bit of time trying, I guarantee you're going to get good at it. I do also want to say this, I, I did a video on this today, that uh, Sarah and myself, we're music people. 
Um, we, we did not go to college for graphic design. No one sat us down and told us how to create websites. No one ever told us how to create one of these websites. You know how we did it? We bought one and we frantically tried to build one and we, we, frust we got frustrated and we spent hours and it didn't look good and didn't work. And then we canceled it. Then we got one again and, and we just did it the hard way. And, um, and we still did it. The point is, I think it's worth spending a little time to uh, go through the learning curve because once you get better, it's going to be easier and faster. And then you can develop this to be even bigger than what I'm going to show you today. But my hope is today, I will keep this simple. I will show you how to create a landing page. That means send someone to a website that allows them to see the business overview without you having to be there. And when they go to view the business overview, you know exactly who it is and you have their website address. This is being recorded, by the way. How does that sound? If you could have a place where you could send someone to that they could input their name and email to then view what it is you do. What is ShopDoc? How does this thing work? And you instantly get notification when that happens. Wouldn't you think that would be a pretty awesome tool to have to just know that happened? And then you could build it even bigger. But if, man, if every shop.com owner had that, it could change your business. Um, I, I realized the impact of this the first week we actually went live, like built it, and it wasn't pretty. It was, it's actually one of the templates that you see here that you can use if you want. I remember going live and I posted it on social media. I said, we finally got our business page up that explains a little bit on what on earth Ryan and Sarah Rose stack do. Everyone has you know, always wondered, here's a cool place where you might be able to sort through some things. And um, someone that I, that I was had on my names list or possibility list never returned my calls, never returned a message. The second I put a site up, they willingly went there and they were the first one to input their information to see what it is I did. See, you actually have an audience out there that do not want you to know they're interested, even though they are interested in what you have. They simply don't want to come out of that shell. They don't want to be prospected. They don't want to be sold anything. They don't want to let you know just in case it's not for them. But if you provided another avenue, they may be willingly go there, learn, and you might have a great new partner out of it. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to build a one page landing site. Um, and this is recorded. So if you need to see this several times, and if this doesn't come out good, so you guys know, I'll be happy to, to create a cleaner version. Uh, I'll talk to Sarah about that and she can upload that as well. So uh, sometimes when you do it live, things don't always happen the best. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk. So bear with me. <laughs> don't give me a hard time. Uh, I'll try to just show you what I would do behind the scenes if I were you to create a simple landing page. All right. Sound good? You guys with me? All right. So first and foremost, if you don't have a site, you need to go to explorena.com, okay? That's the DMS software. That's where you would actually build what we call a recruiting site. You would go down here where it says start now or build a website, okay? If you click start now, it tells you to input your personal information. It tells you to choose an industry. All of this really doesn't matter. Input your shop.com site name, distributor ID, and build my site. And then once it's built, you can actually buy it, okay? And I believe. Uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's sixteen ninety five a month. Maybe someone on here can just make sure that's the accurate price. But uh, that's what it costs to run one of these websites, which I think is is as cheap as it gets out there for what you get in this site. Okay. Uh, as Sarah Rose Stack will be posting this recording, I believe it's probably going to be on mawc four one one dot com uh, or on the YouTube channel or something like that. All right. Send her an email or ask her. <clears throat> or if someone on here knows where all this information goes, feel free to do that. All right. Once you do that, you log into your site, and this is what it looks like. You're now in the back end administrated, uh, administration uh, section of the site. So you're going to then click Manage Your Website. All right. Once you're there, you're going to click on Edit Pages. And then it's going to show you the templated website that you created, uh, names of pages, titles, things like that. I'm going to keep this really simple. And I'm going to go over here to home page and I'm going to click on it. Okay, so far so good. This is the easy section, okay? And it's going to bring up a uh, pre-made design, all right? 
these can be manipulated. So if you kind of like what it says and you like where everything's positioned in the images, you can decide to keep this. You know, if you want to see, you notice how they don't put any real text. Um, they kind of keep, you know, generalized images and icons. So if you like the layout of this entire thing, my suggestion is edit within this and just change everything to be relevant to what you do. You can also delete sections you don't like. Like if you just don't like this section, take it away. So simply highlight it and remove it and you're good to go. Okay, if you don't like this section, same thing. So if there's a template in here that you love, work within it, okay? But I would, I would tell you or advise you that if you wanna manipulate it a lot, it's actually harder to work within the template than not. If you only wanna change a few little things, then I would suggest stay there and then delete the pages you don't like and take it from there. What I would do to create a landing page, I would actually go up to here where it says website, designs, and change design. All right, let me get this uh, go to meeting thing out of the way. And then it's gonna show some different things here. It's gonna show you responsive designs, blank responsive, all these different things. I actually click on blank responsive and I'm gonna click on this guy, blank menu mid top. Simply is gonna, you know, kind of like a uh, uh, horizontal structure where it's just um, section one, two, three, four, five, all stacked. And that's what we're gonna use for responsive. Responsive means that it's gonna adjust to the screen size that you're on, mobile, desktop, things like that. So we're gonna click on this guy. And then it's gonna say change design and delete all pages and widgets, everything. We're gonna say yes, go for it. And now it's gonna give us a clean slate meaning every design's wiped out, everything's you know from scratch, and it's actually easier to build, in my opinion, to make something from that point on, all right? So let's just give it a second to load. Hopefully it's fairly quick, and then, uh, then I'll show you what it looks like from there. Okay, cool. So now it's gonna just give us the same basic pages, and uh, we're gonna go here and click on home page. Is this easy so far? Did I overwhelm anyone so far? So we just created a site, we chose blank, and now this is what we got. A blank old website, nothing to it, nothing special, kind of ugly, um, simple, all right? It's kind of nice when you just start simple because now you can just build upon it rather than trying to manipulate something that you don't necessarily like the design. So here's what I tell everyone on the call today. You got this little section up here, Anything that highlights an orange is usually a text area or an area you can add pictures, all right? And then anywhere that highlights in um, this kind of grayish, you know, or just like a transparent background is usually things that appear in the behind the elements. So think of it like you're, you're, you're stacking things on top of each other or behind each other or in front of each other. That's what building a site, you can create all these layers to it, okay? So there's two basic layers behind something and in front of something, text or image, you know, things like that. So let's just go up here where it says Market America, okay? You're gonna actually replace, if I clicked on there, it looks like a Microsoft Word document, just like, you know, Microsoft Word. You go in here and you say, you would I title this your website name. So you would say, my uh, awesome biz.com. Okay, let's just say that happens to be your website name. You can change font sizes to be whatever you want. You could change boldness. You can change color. You can add pictures, okay? You could put the, the, the text on the left, right, center. You can change the font type. Whatever it happens to be you want to get your design, so be it. Go find that area. You can even customize different colors. Choose the one you want. And uh, I actually don't like that dark, dark, there we go, I'm gonna choose a little lighter gray. And then that's it. So that's my header, really simple. And watch this, if you wanna change the size, height, or width of an area, if you see this little property section, I can click on properties, and now it really gets into, okay, you can change all sorts of things. You can change the, the height of an area, you can change the color, okay? For now, I just wanna change the height. And right here, if you see this little menu item, you can just hover over these. These are all the different sections of your website. Here's the menu. Here's where we were working. Here's behind where we were working. 
So if I want to change anything, these are the options I have. Do you want to change the text? Do you want to change, is there a list there? We don't have a list. That would be like bullets. You want to change the background. I could change the background if I want. Maybe I want a color back here. All right. Sorry, I got a bunch of things popping through here. I could change the color and see there's gray, or I just want to keep it white. And then maybe I want to change the borders or advanced is things where you can change size. So if I just want to, you know, maybe change the size or width or something of that nature, I can do that here. See how it changes different sizes or I make it even bigger or smaller or whatever I happen to want in the section. I'm going to try, I'm going to do 80. Okay. So these are different options. I'm just showing you this so that if you decide you want to customize even better, great, so be it. And then you apply it, and now it's going to save that way for your site going forward. Okay, so the only thing we changed was this text right here. And if you want to change maybe the background color or, you know, make it black, gray, blue, whatever you want, you would go to this properties tab, and that's where you would change that. All right, everyone good so far? I think we're pretty, pretty simple. Okay, and then this, this home area, this is where the main text is going to go that we're going to work on, but we need to look at um, what's behind it because I want to add a nice little picture. All right, so I'm going to click on properties. And right here it says, remember, this is the orange is changing text um, or adding pictures. The, the transparent area right here, see if I can zoom out here for you guys so you can see it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay, is going to be the background. So I'm going to go over here. This is the background. So I'm going to click on this guy. And so I want to put an image behind all of this text. I want to put a nice little cool image and then make the text on top of it. All right. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to the background and it says I can change the color or add an image. I'm going to go add an image. And then just like adding an email attachment, I can select a file. Okay. And then over here, it's just like your computer. Um, if you want to upload a picture you have, go for it. Upload it. If you click on upload, it's going to bring up your computer. And then you select any picture on your computer or any files that you have. And then once you do that, you hit upload and then it shows up in this area. And you can add folders if you want, like my pictures or backgrounds or whatever you want. So I've uploaded a couple, and I'm going to just select this image. Okay. And then it tells you where do you want this image. In the top, do you want it to be centered? Um, do you want it to be a certain size? I like to hit cover. Cover means that whatever size we make it, uh, that's what it's going to stick to. Okay. Someone asked me, is there somewhere we can go to get prior recordings? And this one, I believe there is. I'm going to get that answer for you in a second for you guys. Okay, so we added an image. And it wasn't hard. We simply just selected the, the area behind the text, right? Which was at this little, uh, uh, what do you call that? A gear. And um, But this is what it gave us. And notice how it's pretty tiny. You know, that's just how it's set up. So what we go is we, okay, we put the picture in and let's go to the advanced tab and we can actually make the height bigger. So if we want to choose, let's say 400 pixels, okay, that's just a, you know, a site, a, a size on the site. And now it's going to be this big, or if you want it bigger, great. You can go and play with this to get whatever you want. 500 pixels. That's nice and big. I kind of like that. And uh, I'm just going to hit apply. Okay, everyone with me so far? So we basically took this little tiny area, we made it bigger, and we added a picture, and that is it. All right, nothing complicated so far, and hopefully you're following along with me. Um, and when this is uh, recorded, you can go through and pause it and do it with me. So if you can't, I'm not asking you to remember where to find all these tabs, I'm showing you once. But when you watch the recording, you can simply go, okay, great, pause, I'm going to do it then resume and I'm going to go back. Okay. Uh, someone just asked, so you have to play around with the pixel size trial and error. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, think about web design. It's not like do this and it's canned. It's, it's whatever you want. You don't want it this big. You don't have to have it this big. You could have it smaller. You can have it be really anything you want. Okay. Now 
what I like to do is I want to create a section here that has a text and then I want to create a form so that someone can fill out information to go watch a video and me be notified okay and I want it to be right in this center section and so there's nothing really here see how it's just one big square so to kind of create an, an area that's going to be selective of that I'm going to go in and actually add an area so over here if you just hover over this big section there's something that says add to page see that this is the layers show you all the different layers and then this is if you ever wanted to delete anything so for us we're gonna actually add a little site area on top of this guy all right hopefully I can see that pop up here in a second and then it says widgets you're gonna always add a new one and what it does is every time you add something it saves it so if you ever want to copy it down the road you can copy it so uh, these are the different widgets you can add we're just gonna add an area we just want a place where we're gonna put stuff okay so we're gonna click site a uh, page area you can call it something if you want you don't need to and then we hit OK all right and then if you want to see where it is you just click on highlight this area and it's gonna show you that it's it's somewhere in there see how it's on top of that image that we did all right and here's what I do this is the area we just built it's really tiny it's up at the top I'm going to say I want it to be higher just like we did with the image okay so it's gonna cover a bigger area and then I don't want it to be the whole width of the website you know going from left to right I want it to be a little bit smaller so I can actually put in a percentage right here turn the pixels and they give me an option to to do percent and now it's gonna make it a little bit smaller okay so if I click on this it's gonna show see how it's smaller on this area and then to get this to be centered there's a little trick that you have to do you go down we're still in the same section see where it says margins if you actually select manual for left and right and then put auto it magically centers itself right on your website so that's a little trick if you want to get something that's a little bit smaller than the site to be right in the middle and this is perfect so watch what we're gonna do I'm just gonna hit apply okay someone asked me what's the best pick size to upload if you're gonna use a uh, picture this like this to cover the whole thing you want to use something that's around 200 pixels wide if you use something that is so much bigger like 10,000 pixels like if you take like a professional photographer file they're huge and a big picture what it does on the website it actually makes it fit to the size of the site but the the software is actually uploading that massive file and that sometimes that can cause it to upload slower so if you ever go to a website and it's not like popping up fast or it's, it's kind of choppy it's usually because the files are so huge and no one actually resized it so I actually just you know choose that size if I go to like a picture like this this is just another picture and I adjust the size here's 1800 that would be fine too if you look at the size of most computer screens uh, it's a 1280 pixels this is like a small Mac laptop so um, 18 2000 something like that would be just fine okay and there's a lot of different photo sites if you ever want to go to like um, I don't know just Google you know stock photos you can buy one they don't cost that much find one you like and you can use that and it's safe to use online where um, you might get in trouble if you go to Google images and copy someone else's you know picture off their website and if it's trademarked you know you can't do those things so just a stock image is great to buy sometimes it's a dollar you know to get a picture and, and you're good to go okay so now we have this section in here and now what we want to do is let's add some text all right and this is what we're gonna do let's see if I can remember what I put here I'm gonna add a new widget and I need text so you click on the ABC widget rich text and I'm gonna click on that keep the name and now I have the ability to type something on this website okay so notice it's up here I'm gonna uh, center the text and I'm gonna say digital sorry digital non computers a little slow 
the beauty of doing things digital. World digital business. All right, so I'm going to type in something basic and I'm going to say um, shop.com offers. Uh, uh, has paid out over six point. I'm sorry, three point six five billion dollars to entrepreneurs. <laughs> Learn how you can build a business using this platform. Okay, and obviously you can't see the text I'm writing because the background is the same image or the same color. So what I want to do is I want to change that color to maybe white. And then I'm going to highlight just like a Word document. And I'm going to change some of the sizes on this. So I don't like the font size being so tiny. So I'm going to put it at, let's see, I'll just play with this. I like 36. Big. All right. And then I'm going to change this font size. Same thing, I'm going to highlight it, and then I'm going to choose 18. All right, view the overview below. So I pretty much just typed just like a Word document once I put that rich text in, and now I'm set. Now, there's a couple things I don't like about this. It's kind of hard to read, and it's way up squished at the top. So anytime, again, you don't like the way something is positioned, you want to highlight and click on that little gear, and this gives you the option. So I can say, hey, let's um, let's change the background to something that will allow that text to stand out a little bit better. Okay, I could, I could choose to do that, and let's say I wanted to just choose black. Percentage means it's going to uh, make it transparent, see-through, at whatever level you want. So I'm going to choose 60%. And now I'm going to look at that, and I, I think that kind of looks pretty good. Not bad. And then I go to advanced, and maybe I want to add a little bit area at the top so it's not so squished, and maybe a little bit of an area at the bottom. Okay, you see this so far? And you get to play around, again, with whatever you think you like. Maybe I want it even a little less. Okay. And, okay, that looks pretty good to me. And whatever you want from that point on, you can play with all these different, you know, settings and, and advanced settings and anything you want like that, just so you guys have an idea. Okay, so if you want to move the menu around, you want to delete the menu, you want to do uh, different things, you have the ability to do that. All right, so I'll just kind of keep it simple and, and let's say, okay, we're, we're stuck with this. The last piece is they got to fill something out. Uh, in the form uh, or in a form setting so I want to put a form down here and the form doesn't exist so let's go up here let's go over here and click add to page and it's gonna bring up some of the options we have we want to add a form so we're gonna go to new widget and we're gonna go to form okay and now we're going to go to custom forms. You're going to make your own form. And once we do that, we can drag it into this section. So right here, we're going to go to new form. I'm going to drag it. See how it highlights wherever you want it. We want it right below that section. Okay, website is new form. And then here it is. All right. Once you do that, it's going to add this, this pop-up is going to happen. And it's going to say, what do you want the form to say? So right here is you could choose contact field. And we're going to add, we want to know some of their information. We want to know their name. All right. Pretty simple. And then it pops up over here. And then if you hold this and drag it, it allows you to decide what's going to go above what. So I want their name first, then their email. And then you can click on each thing. Is this going to be showing up? Yes or no? It says, yes, this is hidden. So they won't see name prefix like Mr. or Mrs. I just want to know their first name last name, and email address. That's what this is going to show. And then if you want to change any of these things or add what's going to happen, this is where we're going to do it. Okay? So field options is going to show you the text. I want it to be white. I want it to be a little bit bigger. Okay? 
and then display, there's going to be a button. I want to have a submit button only, and I want it to say view overview now. All right. So pretty simple. And then I'm going to click save so I can show you what it looks like. So see how you can actually change in this form. You can change, um, let me just try to go down here. You can change the, the font type, the color, the size. Uh, if you want this to be rounded button, you can do that. If you want it to be a blue, you know, view overview now button, you can do whatever you want in that system I just showed you. All right. And then you get to do the same thing. You don't like where it's positioned. You can do the same exact thing. You can say, well, I want it to be kind of in the middle. So you can change the percentage, okay? And do the same thing to create the, to make it centered. You just move this. And then all of a sudden your form is where you want it to be. And if you want to have a little bit of a, a space and then the background, just like we did before, we can change the background if we choose to. Um, so let's do that. Let's change the background to the black. And then we had a 40% transparency. You can do that. Um, whatever you want. Okay. Now, if things start showing up a little funky, so this is a great example. Okay, this was a form, didn't show up the way I wanted to. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, all right, let's get rid of this color. That didn't work. All right. So we're back to this. And I changed the background of this, uh, but it didn't change here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this entire blue section to what I actually want. So I'm going to go to here. I want the whole thing to be that transparency. I need it to be a little bit bigger. Went below what I thought. And the original, this guy, I'm going to just turn back. To nothing. So going through that real quick for you guys, that might have been fast, but now we have a very basic site with some text that we created from scratch and we put a form into this and this is what they're going to fill out and then they're going to click on this button and it's going to lead them somewhere. So the very last step to this and everything leading up to this you guys can play with. So if you ever do something, and, and I'm glad it happened that way, where I did something and it didn't appear perfect. What you need to do is then say, okay, how could I go back and fix that to make it look exactly how we wanted to? I wanted this whole thing to be that, that you know, kind of see-through, darker background. And so I had to undo the section to make the whole thing that. And again, it's always layers. Remember, there's something behind and something in front. You can change and go to each layer to change those, okay? Let me go over here real quick to answer some questions so far because the last step is the most important. Hey, Ryan, if you get stuck, will tech support help you out? Yes, so if you need any help, up here it says live chat support. They are the ones you should be doing this with. If you want to do it with the recording, great, but if you want to do it and have someone there live, you have to be patient with it, meaning you say, hey, I have this site. I'm looking to add a form. I want to make sure I set it up right. Could you walk this, you walk me through it? They'll walk you through it, okay? But they also have usually eight different people they're talking to all at once. So just be aware of that. Be patient with it, okay? Can we buy multiple sites? Yes, you can have as many of these sites as you want for any different reason. Can you create a site that is a single long page that scrolls down? Yes. Live chat, yep. Is a landing page a part of your multi-page website? My uh, website started as one page, and that just like you see here, and then what we did is we added more layers to it, more pages to it, and we expanded on it. What I always suggest people is you'll never be done with this. It's going to be the forever like growing thing. Websites are never like you did it once and it's once and done, right? Like the rotisserie chicken commercial. Um, you're going to build it and then you're going to keep adding to it. So you may just like the landing page and say, I just want a landing page site. That's all I'm going to do. And then maybe you want to build a page that a site that has a lot of pages. Great. I just said, I don't have time to manage like hundred websites. Uh, I'm going to create one landing page. And then from there I started adding layers to it and it's still not perfect. And it's, it's never going to be, we just keep adding to whatever the, the thing it is we need at the time. Okay. The most important thing you do need to do, by the way, at this point is you got to link this to go somewhere, meaning when someone fills this out, then what? 
they're going to get, uh, yes, you know, congratulations, or you submitted a form. So you can actually tell them where to go. So what I would tell you to do is find the video or the file or the thing you want to send someone to. And let's just do this for a really easy example. Okay. Market America. We'll go to the Market America channel. And we want someone to see a very quick overview. So let's see if Market America has already created something, which they have. All right, we'll scroll down and we'll say we want them to see this presentation. I'm going to copy this website right up top, the, the link. Okay. They're going to be able to see the Market America presentation. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this form we created. It's going to take me back to that form wizard. Basically, every element you want to customize of the form, you can do it on that wizard that pops up. All right. So here it is. So what we're going to do is go to form settings. It's going to, this is the name. We need to fill out what email is going to be notified when someone fills this form out. This is where you would put yours. If you want to put more, you can put as many as you want. So if you have a husband, wife, team that everyone wants to be notified, so be it. You can put everyone's email, and then when someone fills this form out, everyone will know their name and their email address, okay? You can also create a template um, to, to have kind of like, okay, someone fills this out. Immediately, they're going to say thank you or whatever you want them to say, and it's, it's a, a pre-designed template, or you can design one inside the system. And by the way, no additional cost. That usually costs money to operate other systems. Then it says confirmation. What's going to happen? Do you want to say uh, display a message? A website page you know inside your site or do you want to send them to a web address I would say send them to a web address I put the video in there and now I'm gonna save it so that means when someone fills out this form they're gonna go directly to my uh, 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 to that link that link I just showed you and you're gonna get an email confirmation that someone actually is watching the business overview right now and here's their name and email all right now you can keep adding. See, this is one section. We just we just added one section. So maybe you want a second section down here. Um, I'm just going to delete this uh, just because it's it's there and we're not going to use it. But you could keep. See how these these little areas? I could add another one here and a third one and a fourth one and just keep it scrolling down. Maybe you want to contact me for more for questions. Whatever you want, you can add it. Remember, anytime you want to add to page, you click on Add to Page. And if you want more layers, then you would actually create more layers. I'd click on here, drag it down, decide where you want it, and here's where it would go. It would just be layer number two, all right? And then you would customize this the same exact way that we did the, the, the other ones. Decide the size of it, the height of it, um, everything you want, and then you could just continuously add. Okay, just like we did before. So you're replicating what we did up here with just new information. All right, and if you don't want, like I said, the, the number one thing is you got to get a site live, meaning get that built, get it live, and then add to it. Delete everything else that is not relevant right now. Like right now, I don't need to have my, you know, I could attach my Facebook, let's say, if you have Facebook. Maybe I don't care about this showing up, so I can delete that. Maybe I don't care about having a menu item on the bottom. Let me delete that. Get rid of everything that's going to take you more time, okay? Um, and and then let's say even this. I don't need a menu bar right now because I just don't have any items that, uh, that they're going to go to. So I can get rid of that. See how I went to display and it's hiding it. It didn't actually erase it. It's hiding the menu item, okay? And let's go to the site. And this is what it looks like. I can change it to anything I want. I can switch the background. I can add more. I can, I can go crazy. But this, I did what? Guys, talking to you in less than 40 minutes, 180,000 shop.com owners have not found a way to do this yet, um, besides maybe 10. And it took 40 minutes. And I made mistakes. And you can follow along if you want to make the same mistake with me and then fix it. You can do that in under 40 minutes. You created a landing page that actually works. Okay, so then what you need to do is you need to publish. Publish means that it's going to go live. This is your new design. This is what it's going to appear like. 
We're going to save and publish. So next time you come back, it's going to look this way. It's going to go live this way. And the very last thing you need to do once you do this, okay, let it uh, uh, upload and save the design. It's going to delete the other stuff we didn't need or use. And once that's done, we click on view live site. You can actually see how it works. All right, very good. It's very simple. This, by the way, is always going to be at the bottom of your DMS. It's a link to your shop.com website. Make sure these links work if you decided to keep them. If not, erase them. They go to yours. You can also add other ones that you want. And then you would just test this out. <laughs> not testy. <laughs> um, Got to have some fun while we do this, right? And you would click on view overview now. Wait to see what happens. Once that happens, it's okay, great. It worked. So it took us right to the YouTube channel where someone's going to watch that. That's exactly what we want to have happen. All right. Now there's different things you could do. You can evolve this. You could keep them inside your site. You can embed the YouTube video if you created a page two that it would go to, whatever you want. Um, but you're good to go. And this is also responsive. Okay. So you can actually change this. So it can be a, a function on any single device. All right, so that's what responsive is. So I'm going to show you two more things and then I'll answer any questions you have. For this uh, to go live, for you to share this, you're going to want to add a domain name. All right, so you go to domain names. You can use one that you bought somewhere else or you can register one right on here. It's always going to cost a little bit more to register through uh, this platform than it would be through another site. Whatever you decide to do, GoDaddy is one. You can buy it uh, right on your shop.com site. It's a partner store. Use live chat help to say, hey, I got a site, and uh, they'll help you attach it to the site. Once you do that, that's the website you'll go to, and your website will pop up. All right? By the way, every form will also be saved on here under Customer Manager, and it's actually going to generate almost like a CRM tool where every single person who fills out a form is going to be, um, there's going to have a little uh, date submitted, time submitted, and you're going to have their information. Then you can actually create email campaigns to send out to those people. Let's say you had 100 people on there and you wanted to follow up three months later, you could hit all 100 people and remind them or update them or shop.com came out with this new thing. Here it is. Take a look at it so you have the ability to try to access them or just give them more information. Can we use a go go, uh, domain name for GoDaddy? The answer is absolutely yes. Okay, So you just decide when you go to my account, domains and email, you're going to decide to use a current one you own, Okay, use my existing, or you're going to register a new one. All right, Just so you guys know, this is a simple thing on GoDaddy or another site is, if you're going to buy one somewhere else, you have to switch the name servers. And the first name server is this. So ns3.ivenue.com. And the second one is ns4. You save it. You put in your existing name. And you're good to go. So basically, you're just attaching it. When someone types this in, it needs to go to my site. That's what this, this does. You set it up once. I would use uh, tech support to do it. And you're, you're forever set up, and you, you just have to obviously keep renewing that name if you want to keep it going forward. Okay, I'm going to now answer any questions or concerns um, about this or about anything else that maybe I didn't show. And honestly, guys, th listen, this is simple, but to have something, and, and listen, I didn't get overly complicated, and I, I would suggest you don't too, but if you could just do this and use it, you could put that email address or sorry, that website address on your email signature. You could put it on your Facebook. You could put it everywhere. And you'd be surprised how many people are just curious that will say, huh, what is this business they do? And, and obviously, I just use some default text images, and I didn't, I didn't get overly creative about it. But a lot of people will just fill out the information to see. It could say, get a free view of how the business works, or whatever you want to do to entice them. Um, you can obviously add to this. My DMS is using an old template. By the way, I'm just going to answer some of your questions. Should I delete it and start over with responsive? My take for that is if you are uh, using your DMS successfully with what you have, great. If you have extra time and you want to develop a responsive one, go ahead. You will have to delete the content of your existing one to create a responsive. 
So some people have decided not to do that because they put a lot of time into something. That's it's no problem. I decided to delete my old site and build the responsive one. Um, but yes, yes, uh, my suggestion would be the world is more uh, mobile. And I think in the next 10 years, that's just going to be, you know, who knows if we're ever, I mean, computers are even going to be relevant. So I would suggest if you're trying to market, might as well put the time in now to get ahead. Ryan, can you talk more how to drive traffic to your site? Yes. And you said at the beginning that your team was leveraging uh, one another's sites. Do you set up new team members with a DMS or you have traffic drive to yours? So great question. Um, to Gender, what's up, buddy? Uh, so let me, add, I'll, I'll kind of give you a few things you can do, basic things. My opinion is I'm going to show you uh, one major thing you can do. And then I'm going to tell you what you should be doing or what most people do uh, for, for kind of getting this to be found online and things like that. Um, yes, so there's going to be a lot of people on your team who do not want to build one of these. They're just overwhelmed. They're just uh, part-timers. They're, they're not, you know what I mean? It's, it's sort of like any extra thing is going to overwhelm them. So you're dealing with like a stable and waiting type of person. Um, they might not do this. However, some of them will, because this might be that little way they can finally find the people or feel comfortable sending their link out to someone and getting a few people to watch this where they haven't had any success going forward. So it's kind of interesting who ends up being someone who does this. Um, but for, for a team, we got overwhelmed because too many people wanted help designing these. And obviously if you have hundreds of people, you can't sit there one by one and design all of these. So right now, the way DMS is set up is they don't have kind of, like, you know, a hundred options for you to choose from. You got to do what I just did, at least the way it stands today. I don't know if that's going to change in the future, but I think what I just showed you, imagine if your whole team had their own and they were able to watch this for 40 minutes and do it. Could that change the game of your business? Could you show a hundred more plans? Could you get people that aren't comfortable showing plans to finally send out links and get people to watch it? The answer is yes. Um, so we suggest people to get it and do something like this. Very basic to have a site to send people to, as long as they're happy with, okay, it looks fine. I'm going to use it. Then they're good to go. For those who are too overwhelmed, what we always say is, okay, is there someone in your upline or someone that you're working with directly who you have a vested interest, you know, um, share and use their site and just make sure that they know that you're, you know, you're, you're using that and leveraging it. And most people, listen, I obviously company-wide, a lot of people share my stuff or pages. And um, every single person I ever talk to is the first question we always ask, how did you find out? And if anyone says, oh, a friend of mine, I always say, well, you should call them. Call your friend, uh, you know, message your friend. And a lot of times I'll actually tell people if they have the name, I'll say, hey, so-and-so, watch the video. They're really intrigued. Go, go call them back, you know. It doesn't happen that often, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, you can utilize each other's pages. That would be something I would suggest. As I started originally branding this kind of as me, and um, I've, I've kind of gone backwards a little bit and made this more team uh, related, meaning we want the whole team to share it. I'm even going back through descriptions to remove things that you know I personally have put in there and I try to keep it a little more neutral. But at an early stage, I think everyone should be trying to promote themselves, promote that this is another extension and I think it's a great opportunity. But if someone's refusing to, then at least let them know which ones they could utilize um, because it's going to help them. It's going to help them if they could share. Uh, you know, uh, Dan, let's say you had someone on your team that wouldn't do it, but you had a landing page and they're like, what can I send people? Say, hey, send my landing page. Let me know who it is and I'll keep an eye out. I'll let you know if they watched it. You guys can work together. Okay. Um, but I would suggest everyone should do that. All right. Does that answer that question, by the way? So try to keep them, you know, you're branding yourself, but keep it neutral enough. And remember to keep this simple. If you get so advanced that people like you got your own, you know, uh, animation going on, you got these incredible graphics, you got perfect pictures, you know, from the best photographers on the planet. You got to ask yourself, could other people do that? Um, that's, that's where I made a switch. We started getting so elaborate. And then I said, whoa, no one can do what we do. And it's overwhelming. We got to go simple yet still effective. And I, I believe we're, we're around that area now. Okay. 
Um, I'm glad you like this really good. Uh, let's see. Let me just answer some of these questions. I got to read them out loud while I, while I, uh, uh, go through this. Do you find people watch the whole video all the way through and engage with you? Great question. Uh, the answer is if you use this as a way to set an appointment, the answer is yes. And videos are always hit and miss. If you say, Hey, could you do me a favor? And when you get a chance, watch this, you know, uh, just got to submit your information and watch the whole thing and I'll get back with you. That usually means they're not going to watch it. They're going to watch five minutes and shut it off. What I've found is if you say, hey, when can you watch this? I'm going to send a link. It's going to show you an overview. And they say, well, I can watch it tomorrow. You ask what time? Six o'clock. Great. The video is 22 minutes. I'm going to give you a call around 6.45. I have a few things I wanted to ask you, but I can't ask you until you actually have, have learned the information. Is that cool? They say yes. That's a really good appointment to get someone to watch a video. So don't use it as a passive appointment. Use it as just like you're meeting someone. Try to be that defined about it. They'll watch the whole video if you do that. Okay. Um, appreciate that. Yep, yep, yep. Is there additional fee? Any fee to the monthly 45 Web Center fee? This is not attached to that fee. This is Explore MA is where you're going to buy one of these. It's $16.95 uh, a month to have one. So if you want to have more, it's just you multiply that cost out, but that's that's all you have to pay. Um, so should a landing page be directed to the embedded page on the site uh, and stay on the site? You can do that, and that's totally fine. You just have to take an extra step and build a second page. You have to tell it where to go, so you'd actually have to build the page with the video in place. And yes, you can embed it. Uh, you can ask tech support with that. Um, uh, mine does that, so that's something I decided to do. It's not. It's another uh, complicated step, so just keep that in mind for most people. It's simple when you do it once, but some people it might be just an added thing. Okay, regarding the video, yeah. Do you need a form for each page you create? No, the form is honestly to just tell you who actually is seeing what. Did someone watch a video? There's no way if you didn't have a form and I just had a video on there and. 100 people watched it, I wouldn't actually know. I could see that 100 people landed on my site, but I could not see who watched it. So having them fill out a form just simply triggers an email to me, and then it triggers the site to then go somewhere so you can send them to whatever you want. So you may want to do, maybe you want something about the shopping annuity, you know, learn about the shopping annuity, fill out your email. And um, I would say the only bad thing is you want you don't want a form to view every single thing on the site if you have more than one thing. So just be cognizant of that. No one's going to fill out five different sites to see five videos. They'll, they'll do it once, uh, but probably after that they won't. A couple of the things you can do, by the way, to market this is if you want to, or here, that's it's a great example. I'm going to show you how this works. Um, like when people search shop.com market America, what do most people do? Most people are going to search negative things. They're not going to search how great is shop.com. They're going to say, is, is this a good company or bad company? Uh, or let's just say Market America uh, Pyramid, right? You know, they're going to type in something like that. Everyone wants to know, is is this is this what uh, the worst case scenario is? You know, that type of thing. So they're going to type in negative stuff. And uh, let me just go down and see where. Okay, so build, rebuilding my site, I actually know that people are going to type in things and so do you. So I wanted a chance to show up. So here I am, there's 145,000 results. And uh, on page three, you see my site. Okay. And is marketamericashop.com a scam or pyramid scheme? And then it goes into, you know, uh, all of that stuff. And I get to then, I don't even know where this ends up. You click on this link and it's going to be, here it is. So this is a simple thing, a video I did six years ago, and it explains a few things. All right. How did I end up on that uh, search result? That's something built into here. So you're going to go to manage your website, edit your pages, and whatever page you want to try to put in some words to show up on Google searches, let's say your landing page, you would actually highlight the page and you would click edit settings. And this is going to take you these three little magical areas is what I advise you to fill out. The, there's two really important ones, the title and description, and then the keywords, a little less important. I still fill them out. So the page title is that big highlighted area in Google. You know, the big uh, title, the, the, the bluish area that's highlighted. So you're going to type in, let's just say, um, shop.com business overview. Maybe that's when someone types in, hey, how does shop.com work? You know, or how how it works 
or how, or, or just, or you could say, um, so we put in shop.com business overview, or I could also put in market America overview. So I got two words in there and you want to keep these little things tell you how many words and what you should do and what you shouldn't do according to the rules. And I might put in here market America shop.com, uh, home based business. And then the description is learn, uh, how, uh, shop.com and market America learn how to own, sorry, a shop.com and market America business. And then I will say, um, business, uh, overview video. Okay. So simple. And then I would save this. And now that will help me now start populating higher in the search results for the things I put in those title uh, keywords and descriptions. So that's going to help boost whatever I do. Now, if I build another page, I do the same thing. And you can do this as many pages as you want. This is very similar to when you do blogging, by the way. Blogging usually takes your page title or article title, keywords, description, same thing. So you have the ability to do that with this as well. Okay, and that'll that'll allow you to uh, uh, creep up some of the search results. How do you get the properties area to detach to a new window? Let me. I think what you're talking about is this. I'll go back here. And if you notice, obviously we're working in a a small confined you know rectangle when we're working. So if you want to have these properties down here, instead of just display, uh, it actually have a separate window. I click on that little button. And it's going to now put a whole separate window so I can just work kind of side by side like this. Okay, so see how it's over here? It's not, you know, inside this window. To do that, it's very simple. Hold on, let me go over here so you can see it. I'm going to X out of this. Okay, to do that, you just hit this multiple window button down here. Okay, and if you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that, but um, that's sometimes easier when you're trying to work into this little space and all, see how this kind of takes up a lot of space. If you don't like that, then you just click this multiple window button and it'll put it in a separate window. You can also click this guy and it's going to open up that area even bigger so you have a bigger workspace. And obviously if you click on that window, now you have this whole big screen to work on and everything else is off to the side. Okay, so that hopefully can help you out in designing. If you are a web center owner, would you buy a site for yourself or use Explore MA to build a landing page website? Uh, to sell websites, I don't have a separate website page. I use my web center because I, I believe that's what it was always designed to be done as. I don't have like another site I use to sell the software. I use the web center. So if you're going to use, um, it all depends on also what you want to use it for. Because there's some perks to having the, the web center itself, uh, uh, buying a site on that platform versus D DMS. But for most people, I think the DMS is going to have everything that you need and it's at a, a better price. Remember, they, they lowered the price and, and made it affordable for us as owners. There's not a, you know what I mean? There's, there's really no profit margin in that price. They did it so you can have a tool um, at a fraction of the price that it should be. Do you have a separate URL for your web center business? Yes, I do. So when you go into your web center, which you do not need to have one of these, by the way, is uh, you do the same exact thing. It actually is the same type of uh, software. So everything you're seeing here, that's kind of how it looks on your web center as well. They did it to, to duplicate that process. All right. Can you have multiple buttons under your form? Each form has the ability to have one button. So if you want to have more buttons or you want to get more complicated or add, here, I'll just show you some things that this can actually do. You could create multiple um, options. Like if I wanted to do a custom field, I can go over here and I can say, I actually want uh, radio buttons. I want to say, uh, you know, I want to describe something here in this help. Uh, I want to add buttons. So I want to say option one, two, three, four, need help. And I can add a little button or whatever I want. And then I could save this as a new form and watch what happens. Okay, form two, and this will then show you what that looks like. Hold on a second. Let me see if I did this right. 
Uh, did not save it, sorry. I'm gonna do it one more time, just so you have an idea of what this can actually do. Just did not like to save for me, so I will add this again. And we'll do like radio buttons or check boxes. You can add different things here that you want. Okay. And then I'm gonna save this in here. Save. All right. So that's an option. I could add like a different field option. So I could say, I could even say, how did you find out about this? Did you find out from a referral, a friend, a, a, a whatever? So you can add anything you want here. And again, you can change, you could put space, you can make these rounded, you could change the button colors and uh, the, you know, if you mouse over it, different things like that. Uh, the site can have multiple pages, correct. Is e-commerce functional and DMS? Good question. It wasn't, let me see if it is. Commerce, okay, leave page. Let's see if this is actually live. Activate. The answer is yes. Looks like so now you have the ability to sell on your DMS site. And I want to see one other thing just out of curiosity uh, that was talked about at World Conference, or sorry, International. Let's see if it's actually live. You, um, have the ability to add some of the products off your site that show up automatically. Let me see if this guy is in here. A okay, blogger, wrong code. Let's see. I'll have to ask Sarah about this. Don't know yet. Oh, here it is. Yes, so if you click on shop.com, and let's say on your site you actually wanna sell products, you guys realize that we can't actually sell products and services directly on the site. So you can't sell OPC3, for instance, on your DMS site. You couldn't put it in the e-commerce. You could put other things, like you could put, I don't know, like you sell business cards or something, like whatever you want, you could do that. Or let's say you wanna sell tickets to your team. Great way, great reason to use the e-commerce function of the site. But let's say you actually want to add products that people can buy. Uh, let's go down here. I've never used this before, so uh, bear with me. So I'm going to drag in, okay, shop.com product. All right, let's see what pops up once we do this. Um, let's see, affiliate publisher ID. Oh, so I have to go in and actually create an ID number, by the way, uh, which I do not have, and it's, it's a longer process to do that. But what you can do is you can actually create, let's say you want to sell shoes. Okay, for whatever reason, you can take the category shoes off your shop.com site once you create that affiliate ID, which is in your unfranchise, and it will take the entire category and narrow it down to whatever you want to sell on your site so you can actually sell those products. So you could sell OPC3 on your DMS because it's actually tied back to your shop.com site. It is so cool. I just had yet to know that this was live. So good question, and I learned something by um, your questions tonight. So yes, you can you can do that. That's how you would actually sell your products on your own site. Okay, um, let's see. Or send them an NPO video or other aspect of the business. Yes, so if you had other things you could do, what I would do is create other pages for that. So you could say, you know, let's say you, you built the landing page, now you're ready to build something else. So you could say NPO program. You could say Motives Cosmetics. You could say Web Center Division. And you could have all these different links to bring them to pages to explain that. Absolutely. Okay. You could sell other products on the e-commerce, but if it's anything that is exclusive to shop.com, it has to always check out on the shop.com platform. But this allows you to sell it without leaving your site and it tracks all the way back to your shop.com site electronically. So it looks the same to the user. They don't even realize it's it's being processed through shop.com because they're checking out on your DMS site. And by the way, that's a really brilliant way to start marketing. If you're a big person to sell OPC3 or these other things, you could you could do a lot of great things using that. Okay. Can you integrate an already existing WordPress site? You uh, can host it on this platform and then use it that way, but that's a question for tech support. Uh, I don't know if it would be something you would do through here. You could integrate your blog as a page on this site using your WordPress site. So let's say you're just WordPress sites, an ongoing scrolling blog, and every time you publish an article, you want it to show up on, uh, inside your DMS, you are, you're able to do that. Create an ID number on unfranchise.com. Yeah, you have to go on unfranchise. 
there's the widgets, the affiliate uh, publisher link. You actually have to go on there uh, to get that stuff. So cool. Um, very cool. Yeah, so, I mean, guys, I'm pumped about this stuff. Do you, do you realize how big this can be where you could build, uh, let's say you want to promote Awake Shots, and you don't want to do it on shop.com, and you want to be able to promote it like I showed you on Google and things like that. You could create a site that just is is advertising that and um, drag this little link in there. And every time someone buys it, it just goes through the system the way it is. But for the customer, it looks like they're checking out on this exclusive site that you have. So um, this is also then, I know they have these types of functionalities built where you can display it on other people's websites. So if you wanted to sell products on your site, there's a whole other thing. And, and I don't want to get into it here. but um, APIs is what they are. So basically you're allowed to take functions from sites and have them display seamlessly on other sites, but it all tracks through the software of shop.com. So this is the future of where we're going. And this is a great example of how we're already there doing a lot of these things. And DMS already has the, the tools built in where other things don't. So this is exclusive to owners. And again, this is stuff nobody knows about, including myself. Um, I knew it was coming, just didn't know it launched officially. Okay. It is so awesome. Uh, love it. Yep. Very cool. So add a page for each thing you want people to link to. So yeah, so imagine this. Imagine if you had, you know, one page and then as you had time, you could build another one. And by the way, it's this simple if you want to add pages. Let me go here. Leave page. You could click right here, add a new page. And then it's going to say, do you want to copy a page design? I would say yes. Do you copy the home page you did or another page? Okay, so it'll say uh, copy a, a copy from home. Uh, let's say this was for motives. Okay, you could create motives. And page how to remember has, has everything to do with what's going to show up on Google. So you can say market America motives cosmetics buy now. All right. Yes, I want a menu item. What is a menu item going to be called? Motives. And then you add the page and then poof, it's designed. You go on here and you would customize it to whatever you want to say about motives. So how cool is it that you could go, hey, look at the divisions of the company and let's say you wanted to build that. You could build web centers, TLS, motives. You can link them to your motive site or what you could even do is say, here's some of our featured products and you could have them displayed where the person could actually buy them. And you just have to plug in that widget and tell what products you want showing up. That is so cool. And uh, that could get be a great way to get more customers, by the way. So, yes, totally. Uh, could the purchase <coughs> through DMS go through iTransact? Remember, everything's going to be the same. So if I click on one of those widgets, that product, that, that plug-in, and someone buys it, it's actually going to my shop.com site. They don't know that. They're just checking out on your, your website. It looks seamless, but it will trigger if you have iTransact. You could also get iTransact to for this e-commerce. So if you wanted to, let's say, sell convention tickets on the e-commerce, you could hook up iTransact to that as well. You just have to call them and, and tell them if you're going to use it for multiple purposes, they may ask you to get another account. Okay, where do I create a DMS on the web center? You don't go to web centers, you go to exploreMA.com is where you buy these. All right, so you do not need a web center. Then link them to your uh, Motives mini site. Yeah, you can, you guys have so many options now. I mean, the company is it's crazy what you get with this, and we undersell it so much. I mean, you're talking about thousands of dollars a month that we should be paying for what we get, and um, you know. A site like this for sixteen ninety five, doing everything I just showed you it can do. I mean, it's it rivals any huge company out there. So take advantage of this stuff. And like I said, people's um, problem is they get overwhelmed and there's too much to do, and so they don't do anything. You need to get them to take a step, or have you to take a step to say, "I'm going to get a landing page," and then you can build the rest as you have time, and you don't have to publish all the changes until you're ready. So. When you have a little bit of time, build another page and save it. And then when you get around to it and when it's finally done, then you hit publish and then they'll all go live. All right. How do you market DMS? This is what everyone needs to realize. I just showed you how to do some keywords, but then I would do it the simple way. 
What are you doing to get attention on Facebook? What are you doing to get attention when you talk to people? If you guys look what I do, I very rarely put any money into this. I do it the simple way. I say, okay, I'm going to post a lot on Facebook. Uh, and I have some stuff on Meetup, by the way, that tells you how I do it. I then do stuff on Instagram. I do stuff on YouTube. I do stuff on Twitter. I do every, every social media platform is free exposure for you. It's free. It doesn't cost money. You know what it costs? It costs time. Um, and, and if you mentioned or showed a picture of your website, just say, Hey, go to myawesomebiz.com and you put that in your email address and you put it in your Facebook profile, you put it in your LinkedIn as where you're working or the company that you have, you make it visible. And then you do the job of expanding distribution or networking by talking to lots of people and talking and meeting different groups of contacts and moving through networks, the old school way that we've been taught with the speed of social media allows you to have that reach. That's how I market. I try to be as visible as possible. Um, and then everyone has the option to learn what it is I do. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, it is 10, 11. Uh, that page took what, 40 minutes with us kind of talking in between two. So I think everyone is at a place where they could build one of these and start the process. That's what I would suggest. Share this. Um, Sarah will be posting this and I'm sure notifying people on the page that she promoted this where it's going to be. So just keep an eye out for that so you can watch the replay, share with your team. And, uh, that's all I got. I hope you learned something tonight. Thank you guys. I uh, appreciate the questions by the way. And that was a great find to know that the e-commerce is live and then the widgets to sell product on your site and connect it back to shop.com is live as well. So very, very cool stuff. So will UFO get commissioned BV, IBV on DMS through APN? Um, yes, yes. All, remember, all the sales go back to your site. Okay, There is no uh, BV, IBV to buy a DMS site, just so you know. So $16.95 or whatever it is per month is not a commissionable thing. It's just the cost to own it. All right, you're welcome. There will be a replay. Yes, it will cut out when you said yes, yes, yes. There will be a replay. Uh, it should be wherever you registered for this, that link will, they'll post when the, when the replay goes live. Okay. So I believe that was on a Facebook page. So she'll, she'll po post that live so you guys can find it. All right. That's all I got. I actually have to go do a launch right now. So thank you guys for your time. Appreciate it. And good luck. Uh, look forward to seeing all your different landing pages in the future. Take care.